Hi, good morning everyone. This is Sophie and Day here with our daily LinkedIn puzzles. And today we're gonna to be talking about agenderism. And we're gonna be doing that sort of in the uh, context of it being um, asexuality awareness week. So we're halfway through that, it's Wednesday. Um, so all week we've been talking about asexuality, uh, what it is, what it isn't, aromanticism. And so we want to talk about the third possible acronym definition of the A in 2S LGBTQIA+, and that is agenderism. Um, so we'll do that in the middle of doing our little daily LinkedIn games because, um, again, this is just a space for you to um, hear me chit-chat about the topic of the day while waiting to see if you have any questions or any thoughts on sex and sexuality. Um, my name is Sophie of sexwithsophie.com. And so uh, my job is to teach people how to talk to each other about sex and so um, and sexuality. And so if there's um, a way that I can do that by just providing general information, then that is my aim. And so, um, yeah, let's get started. Let's just jump right into cross climb because it's super fast. I tend to do um, my least favorite to most favorite uh, games and so that's why I kind of start here and let's go so this one says uh, what this emoti emoticon represents so we'll say wink hand washing fixture is a sink barbed wire fence red Red something supernova, a, a chapel roan. Oh my gosh. I love her. I've never heard a single <laughs> song that she's done, but I love everything she represents. So uh, that sucks that I don't know the answer to that one because I'm, I'm um, a surface supporter, I'd say. So I definitely need to check out her music. Um, sported as in clothes of you wore. Um, so let's just put these in order as best as we can and then we'll try to figure out what's missing for the the uh, Chapel Roan song. So war wire <laughs> I'm gonna guess wine and then wink and sink. So probably red wine. Yeah, red wine supernova um, Which will be my first song of Chapel Roan that I will check out. I, I love that she um took a stand like i follow her on, her on instagram and so i saw when she posted how she was kind of done uh putting herself out there and and uh doing meet and greets and things like that and she really wanted to really solidify that barrier between her and her fans and everybody was like oh you're new here you're you know this is what comes with stardom and i i wholly disagree i don't think anybody should be disrespected um or forced to be performative in any sort of way just because you're a performer it makes no sense um they're still a human being especially with their i think their transgenderism and um some of the other like kind of topical things that surround their life in general um you know it puts them under the spotlight even more and in a very negative way and from a very sauron like uh gaze and so i definitely feel like she's um, a trailblazer in, you know, again, establishing and, and affirming those boundaries. So saying all that to say, I like Chapel Roan and I'll, I'll definitely check out Red Wine Supernova. <laughs> um, so the top and bottom rows are a compound term for an insect larva that produces a valuable product for textiles. So that would be a silkworm. All right. And good. Good job. So um, when it comes to agenderism, and again, feel free to interrupt me at any time. I'm simply here to um, basically offer uh, a space for you to call or comment about any thoughts and questions that you have around these particular topics or um, this daily topic. <laughs> um, we're also in LGBTQ uh, History Month, which is amazing. And I'm in the UK where it's Black History Month. So if you want to talk about anything that's on your mind, especially as we approach this American election, I've already voted. I've uh, voted for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. 
And if you'd like to know why, I'm very happy to um, chit chat with you about that. Um, but yeah, this is a very interesting and wild time. So that's why I just feel it's important to kind of offer this space. I'm going to continue to do my Ask Sophie answers where I get into really detailed researched responses. Um, but again, just to kind of focus on today's topic, uh, I picked a gender again because it's um, what the A in 2SLGBTQIA plus uh, could stand for. What it basically means, and, and just to kind of give you a quick breakdown of what the difference between sex and gender is. Um, with sex, we've talked about this before, you really only have three. You're either male, female, or you're intersex. You're somewhere in between. That's because sex is, um, in part, it's immutable. It, it, it's your genes, your, your um, uh, chromosomes, your genetic makeup. But there, there's also a part that can be uh, alterable, and that's things like your phenotypic sex traits, like having a penis, a vagina, um, having ovaries, testes, hormone levels, those are all phenotypic sex traits. Um, within the phenotypic sex traits, you have things called uh, secondary sex traits. That's whether you have facial hair, big boobs, hips, things like that. Things that aren't really required for reproduction, but still dictate whether or not, again, you fall in that male, female, or intersex spectrum. Um, so that's kind of it for sex. Now, gender, that's a whole other thing. Gender has nothing to do with biology. It has everything to do. Oh, hi, baby. She's dreaming. <laughs> but it has everything to do with the societal constructs that we collectively establish and then also that we individually build into our gender schemas from when we're kids. So if society dictates that a woman looks like X, Y, Z and a man looks like X, Y, Z, then we start to say, okay, I think a man is this and I think a woman is this. And that is what your gender schema um, starts to associate with those different genders. And now your personal feelings around whether you, the gender schema you were assigned at birth, um, how that actually, uh, you know, um, corresponds to you know the gender schema that you've um, I guess established in your mind in regards to what societies helps you to understand a woman should be or a man should be um, that's where things can get a little tricky so if you're if you're born being told that you fit the <clears throat> you fit the gender the society of the societal construct of man or little boy the, and you feel your whole life, I'm a little boy, that's me, then you are a cisgender man. Um, now, if you can imagine feeling like you're a cisgender man, but, but that your gender schema uh, that you were assigned at birth is for a female or for a woman, excuse me, because female is a sex-related term, um, so uh, can you imagine that, that you're, you're being told your whole life that you are a little girl, that you look like a little girl, you have all the parts of a little girl, but you know in your mind that you're a little boy, you feel like a little boy, the gender schema for everything associated with being a boy or a man is what you internalize. That's how you feel. If that's the case, then you're a trans man. You're still a man because you feel like you're a man. You know, you have developed a gender schema for how you feel that that fits more with the societal construct of being a man. And so no, nobody can tell you different. Whether you do anything about it or not, you're a trans man. You're a man. Um, so that's where the trans debate kind of comes in. I don't know why there's a debate. It's just, again, it's all made up shit. I mean, it's, it's literally what we imagine and perceive ourselves to be so when somebody says oh you're you're not a man <laughs> like who are you to tell anybody that it's stupid so where a gender kind of comes in is where you might have been born male female or intersex but when it comes to the gender schemas that you start to again build in your mind as a child um they just don't mesh up neither of them mesh up with 
what you actually experience internally and perceive yourself to be internally. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of a tricky concept except if you're cis or even if you're trans because you you can't not feel that you are <laughs> a certain gender. But if you can imagine like just genuinely that doesn't you, you don't fit any of that. You don't feel as though you have masculine or, or feminine tendencies or traits, then you would be a gender. And all of it's a bit of a spectrum. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit after we play pinpoint, just the spectrum of it all. Um, but that's just kind of a general overview of sex, of gender, and of where a gender kind of falls into play. And in, again, the, um, the, the gender schemas that we all build for ourselves. Um, so yeah, let's move into playing pinpoint and again, feel free to interrupt at any time if you want to call in or if you have um, any thoughts and want to leave a comment. Uh, very happy to also just talk about puzzling. Uh, my girl Sophie that I just met yesterday from Hong Kong, uh, we had a wonderful time just going over star battles and she put me on to some really cool new sites. So, you know, I'm, I love puzzles. I'm here to just talk about those if you like too. So again, let's move on to pinpoint. This is our second daily LinkedIn puzzle. Also very easy, so we should uh, get it done pretty quickly. All five clues, maybe they're bands. Uh, seasons, there's four of these things. Groups of four, cardinal directions, card suits, leaves of, on a lucky clover. They're just not that difficult but it's still a fun little game to play um so yeah just to kind of jump back into the agender discussion um i first uh met someone or or kind of really delved into this topic when i did my sex with sophie podcast episode with my friend pamela who is um asex she's she's on the far end of the spectrum of asexuality aromanticism and a genderism. She's um, she doesn't have any sexual attraction for anyone. She doesn't. She's maybe a little demisexual. She actually, uh, once she forms an emotional attach attachment, she can experience those feelings a little bit. Um, like she was uh, married at one at one point, but she said even that was, you know, she doesn't foresee herself doing that again. Um, <laughs> She's uh, a romantic, um, and she says that she is an agender female. So she present. If you first look at her, she's a beautiful, beautiful Asian woman. Um, if you first look at her, you'll think, "Oh, that, that's a woman. That's a girl. She fits the gender schema that most people." Sorry, my dogs are playing around. <laughs> that most people tend to um, have for what a woman is. And so she understands that. And so she um, she gets that, that, that she looks like a, fe a female or a woman. So she doesn't take that away from her agenderism. She doesn't feel like she's a woman. Um, her pronouns are she, they. Um, so it's an interesting thing to kind of delve into her experience and understanding her a little bit better and how that presents for her. So highly recommend that you check out that episode of the Sex with Sophie podcast. It's a podcast where I interview people from different walks of sexual life. And so, um, yeah, it was really, really great to speak with her. And it also helped me to kind of understand, first of all, I, the last few days I've been telling you about my husband who is Aero Ace. He's aromantic and asexual. And I didn't even know and would have never known if I hadn't had that deep conversation with Pamela because um, I honestly hadn't even heard of asexuality before her. Um, so then to really learn about it, um, hear her story, uh, do a lot more research on my own, it helped me to kind of put two and two together about my husband. But even um, in the context of agenderism, um, let me show you a, a chart that I love to use from a, a gentleman named um, Flint. <laughs> And his Instagram is just Flint is fine. Let's see if that pops up for you. Yeah. So basically, this is everything we talked about with gender, how it's a social societal construct. Um, basically, these are the, the various 
gender schemas that we can um, individually uh, build based on the societal constructs of gender. So if you're a woman and you feel like you're a woman, you're probably in this solid A1 category. Um, if you are a man or you're down here in 7G, if you're non-binary, meaning you, you don't really subscribe to either, but more that you feel like you are both, um, then you would be non-binary. Um, if you are <laughs> gender fluid, where you kind of move between feeling um, or presenting your gender expression as a man and woman or woman, um, you're gender fluid. If you're agender, now this is again the topic that we're talking about today, then you don't feel like you're either. So I'd say Pamela is probably down here at, at 1F where she, again, understands she's a woman. She dresses like a woman. Her She keeps her appearance very pretty like a woman. You know, she understands that and that's comfortable for her, but she ultimately internally feels agender. Um, and I think even for myself, like I'm, I'm kind of down here. I'd say I'm probably more like three C, maybe two B. Like I'm, I understand I'm a woman, but for a very long time, um, I was infertile. Uh, for a very long time, um, ironically enough, developing early. Like I got, I have huge boobs. <laughs> I have huge boobs <laughs> to the point where it's funny that. Um, one of my taglines in my kind of pro promotional materials in my videos is, uh, you know, come with me along this journey of sex education, because who better to go on that journey with than someone, um, that you can walk beside without distraction. And somebody commented on one of my videos that said that, like, like, uh, you know, who's going to tell her. <laughs> So I get it. I have huge, huge, huge boobs. I'm like a 38K or something like that. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, but I de developing early as I did, big old butt, big old boobs, I actually had to um, tune out um, the male gaze, I'd say, very early. And so after... 10, 11, 12 years old, I very rarely noticed people noticing me, um, if that makes any sense. And so in my head, as I was coming into my womanhood, I diminished it so much that I, I inadvertently kind of, in my own mind, again, even though my outward appearance is very feminine, <laughs> Um, in my head, I kind of moved myself toward that age gender spectrum a little bit more than I, I ever really realized until, again, learning more about this and, and, and understanding it better. Um, and then also, I'm pansexual, so I, I love women. Um, so I've kind of felt that masculine side of me in loving women. Um, so I, again, that's why I don't feel I'm, like I'm solidly in the one zone. Um, so I can, you know, get my studishness on sometimes which is kind of interesting so um that's why again I, I don't feel like I'm solidly in the a1 corner and again being infertile for so long it took us 10 years to have a biological baby I do have a five-year-old so I felt like a mom for a long time now um she's adopted and, and the love of my life um but yeah just that that stint of trying to uh, activate my femininity by <laughs> uh, experiencing pregnancy, if you will, that that took so long for me that it, I think it, it it's one of the other things that kind of knocks you down into that a gender feeling um, a little bit more. So that's just, you know, I guess, interestingly, where Pamela has kind of helped me understand where I fall on this gender spectrum. <laughs> so it's, it's all a very interesting thing. But um, if you have any thoughts on where you land on the spectrum. I'd love to know it. If you uh, have any other questions about gender, agenderism, definitely let me know. Um, but let's move on to our next puzzle. And uh, yeah, again, this is your space. If you want to chit chat about anything, give me a call, leave a comment. Now, tango is uh, becoming really fun for me. I think the harder a puzzle is, the more I really enjoy it. Um, 
and so these have been interesting so you, you have suns you have moons you can't have more than two in a row you have to have an even amount of suns and moons on each column and in each row and so uh, it's usually like three a piece depending on excuse me depending on the puzzle size also you have these symbols where if you have an X it has to be an opposite symbol if you have an equals it has to be the same symbol um, so since this is a Sun these have to be moons that has to be a Sun um, and then you again can't have more than two in a row so we know these have to be suns on either side of these moons this has to be a moon uh, on the other side of this Sun so now we have two suns two moons um, we know we are going to need at some point to have a sun and a moon here it's still kind of hard to determine what that'll look like just yet so uh let's look at this we have where if we had a sun here we'd have more than two in a row so that has to be a moon um let's see same here we have uh two moons so we have to have a sun two suns so we have to have a moon two moons so we have to have a sun and let's see uh, now we have three suns in this row so there has to be a moon here now there's two in a row and there's three moons so everything else in this column has to be a sun now there's two suns that has to be a moon this column needs a sun to round it out and of course these two suns have to have a moon on either side and there's the opposite symbol anyway there's the opposite symbol here so that has to be a sun need a moon to complete this column need a moon to complete this column this is also a moon uh, can't have more than two, uh, two in a row so that's a Sun need a moon to complete this column Sun to complete this column uh, a Sun to complete this column and a moon to complete that column so yeah not too bad I like it it makes your brain think <laughs> you make my brain happy <laughs> I'm sorry we just saw Tropic Thunder for the 8,000th time so forgive me um, but yeah let's set up my all-time favorite LinkedIn daily puzzle Queens which is just another name for a star battle um, which um, again I like to play a little after we finish our Queens puzzles if we have some time um, and if baby girl lets us um, so I guess my final thoughts on the whole agender thing are just that um, yesterday we talked about what asexuality isn't and how it's not celibacy, it's not abstinence, it's not the 4B movement, it's not all of this, this stuff, but what agenderism isn't or, or isn't exclusively, I'll say. Um, when we look at media and you see like the the good doctor, I think it is, the, the autistic sort of um, uh, aloof kind of bumbling, you know, uh, very smart person who, or ADHD type person who's presented on television. Um, I don't know, I feel like, like Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory, those are the people that I think they're trying to check a box with to say, oh, we we are representing asexuality or agenderism in this way, because this is what it means to not have a gender. And it's not showing that asexual people, aromantic people, agender people can be very sexy, um, have sex, can feel masculine and feminine, can feel these things, um, can have that gender expression. Uh, care about their hair and makeup, care about their appearance, can love, can have kids. You know, just because you land within an orientation that, again, you didn't choose, um, it doesn't mean that you suddenly become this sexless creature. In some cases, sure. And in some cases, that's where um, agender, asexual, aromantic people want to be. And that's where their comfort zone is. And that's fine. You have people who are in what's called a QPR, a queer platonic relationship, who still, you know, want that connection with people uh, to, to get married or have, a, again, a relationship. Um, 
but they but they just don't you know again they're presented to the world as this i don't know like less emotive almost sociopathic kind of presentation and I, and that's not what it is so if, i think if you meet anybody who's uh agender uh, like like I've had the experience of doing after meeting Pamela, I've, I've been introduced to so many more people who are asexual via Tumblr and, um, you know, even some on X and stuff like that um, and Instagram. Oh, my gosh. And so seeing the passion and the involvement and some of the political viewings and all kind of interesting, funny um, things that you you get from these people and you see just how normal and regular they are it, it just becomes an affront to then see that that's that the sheldon from the big bang theory is how they're presented and is really like the only sort of um i don't know like like celebrity <laughs> or character role model that these people are given and i, I think there's a lot of that that's changing like in a TV show called Sex Education, it wasn't done well, but at least it was, uh, there's one instance of, you know, asexuality, agenderism, kind of coming to the mainstream in a, in a way, I suppose. Um, uh, yeah, you're seeing a lot of celebrities. Maybe we'll talk about that tomorrow, like some of the, the actual role models who are uh, ace and, and arrow and agendered. Um, but yeah, so just my two cents there if you see something in media and and they're trying to couch weirdness and strangeness and otherness as the only presentation for what it's like to be ace or especially a gender just just give it a second thought you know take it with a grain of salt uh, go out and try to make friends who are of different persuasions than you um, to really get a more clear picture of what it really is and what it's really like. So there we have it. That's my last thought on agenderism. Um, so yeah, let's move into our queen's puzzle. And again, this space is very open for you to comment on anything I've said, especially if you're ace, agender, arrow, um, because again, I hate to talk about you without you. <laughs> like, again, I don't feel like I'm solidly in the A1 category that we talked about with our little, um, puzzle here. And that's my personal business. So let me <laughs> turn that off. But yeah, I don't think I'm solidly in the A1, um, section. So, you know, it, it's all a spectrum, but yeah, let's, let's knock out Queens. <laughs> So, um, right away, I see that there are three, well, well, I thought there were three, but no, there's not. Okay, well, right away, I was like, oh, right away, I'm seeing, and I and now I don't. I thought there were three s shapes within these three columns, but the brown over here is throwing me off, um, which is okay. Now, I like that these shapes are tricky because you can't really take anything away because if you had a uh, crown here normally it would take away this this and this and this but you could still have a crown here so there's not a lot we can take away um so for instance like if we had a crown here we wouldn't have one here, 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 but we could still have one here. So there's not a lot that we can really do um, by way of the shapes themselves. So I think we do have to do some counting. Um, so yeah, within these four columns, uh, the blue, green, red, and yellow are solidly within those. So everything outside of that can go. And then that leaves that brown Ah, sorry that leaves that brown for our first crown crown town so that takes away all of this here and now we're given a shape that we can start to kind of whittle away from so this little three point l here 
Um, we can't have a crown here. We can't have a crown here because that would eliminate the entire box. Now that leaves us another little Tetris S where we can eliminate a crown here because that would eliminate the entire shape. Um, let's see. Um, boop, 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 boop. So now we have a little three cell red shape. So we can't have one here, which is already marked out. Can't have one here or here. Um, let's see, anything else? The um, green here, can't really do much about. All right, so now the blue, oh, that's already accounted for, so no. The yellow and green are solidly within these two columns, that's already accounted for. Um, okay, let's just do some counting and see what we see. Uh, there's two here here hmm what I'm trying to do is find any more of those like collections of shapes that can only be in a certain uh, set of columns or rows um, okay and we have a pretty big one right here so in the bottom two rows there are only uh, two colors, pink and purple. So any pink or purple outside of these bottom two uh, rows can be eliminated because you have to have a crown within those two in, or in order to fulfill the one crown per row rule. So now we have our little three cell shape here. We can't have a star here. Um, let's see. So now we have on this top row where there can only be orange. So again, we uh, can take away everything else that's orange outside of that row. Now that leaves blue is only being in this row. So we could take away where blue could be anywhere else because it can't be there. Same for green. Now that leaves gray as this uh, rose crown. And we could take away all the rest of the gray and the rest of this column. And now our pink is here. Take everything else away for that uh, surrounding it because they can't touch. Everything else in that column and everything else in that row, leaving our purple, which leaves our orange. And let's see, so now we have our green. Can take away everything around it, everything in its, its column and everything in its row. That leaves our yellow, leaves our blue, and finally our last crown, our red. That was a really fun one. That was really challenging, I liked it. Uh, fantastic. All right, yeah, that was good. Um, I'll tell you what, let's do maybe one or two star battles. Um, just again, leave you some space to give me a call or to chit chat with me about any of these topics about agenderism, about um, it being <coughs> so sorry, asexual awareness week. I have three dogs, so it gets a little rowdy in my household. So sorry. Um, but yeah, let's do a couple of star battles. We'll do one or two that are um, the one star just so you can kind of get your queen's um, fix if you <laughs> got hooked just like I did. Because um, those are always going to be one stars. And then we'll we'll jump up to maybe your, a two or three star if we have time. So um, some of the rules I talk about are applicable for any amount of stars that you're looking for. So for instance, if you have a, a stick or a one line figure um, shape then you can't have anything else in its row or column. So since this one's only two, you can't have anything on either side of it because it would eliminate that entire shape. Um, so now we have where in the bottom two rows, we have two colors or two shapes that are solidly only within these two rows. 
So see how the yellow is here, but it goes outside of it? The green and the purple don't. So everything else outside of that green and purple in these bottom two rows can go. That leaves uh, a little two cell stick for our, our brown. Nothing else can be in that row. Same for our yellow, nothing else can be in that row. Now we have our uh, gray star. Oh, this one's quick. Take away everything around it, everything in its row and everything in its column that leaves our red. Take everything around it, everything in its row is gone. Everything in its column can go. Now the purple is a one, is a stick, I guess. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, the green is a stick and also you can only have um, I'm sorry, you can't have a star here because that would eliminate the entire shape. Uh, same here, you can't have stars here because that would eliminate the brown. So that leaves our yellow, that leaves our brown. You can take away everything else in those columns. Um, let's see, so now we have our light blue. Take away everything else in its row, everything around it, everything in its column. Uh, we leave our orange, take everything away around it, everything in its row, everything in its column. That leaves our purple. Uh, that leaves our green. And that leaves our dark blue. And finally, our pink. Wow, that was super fast. Good job, y'all. Yeah, very fast. So, good job. Yeah, we're still not close to that. <laughs> The records for any of these I doubt will ever be, but they're still fun to do. Um, so let's try one more one star, and then let's move up to a two star. This one seems like it might be a little easy. Um, <clears throat> I don't like that with Puzzle Baron you can't choose the difficulty level, but you can kind of gauge how hard it's going to be by how long it takes. And again, feel free to interrupt anytime if you want to change the subject and talk about uh, sex and sexuality or leave me a comment if you have any thoughts on anything I've shared about agenderism or if you want to talk about um, any of the topics that'll come up in a second up here. Um, yeah. <laughs> I am at your disposal. Because again, I am Sophie of sexwithsophie.com which is a platform uh, where I teach people how to talk to each other about sex, whether it's teaching you how to talk to your kids about sex, teaching you how to talk to people who disagree with you about sex and sexuality, um, teaching you how to talk to your partner about sex and sexuality, um, parents about sex and sexuality, um, talk to other people who are like you. Uh, there's so many community features. It's a really beautiful place. So check out sexwithsophie.com. Well, I look for a more challenging one. Oh my gosh, 3,719 is the average time it takes to complete this puzzle. So it sounds like it's going to be a doozy, but the record's still pretty low. So maybe not, maybe just not a lot of people have done this one. <laughs> so we'll see. Now, right away, I see in the top three rows that there are only three colors. So any of those colors outside of those uh, three rows can go right away. Um, I see a Tetris L. Oh, yeah, so you can't have one here because it would eliminate that's this entire shape. So now we have a little tiny two cell stick. So we could take everything away around it because it's two cells and everything else in its row. The gray is now a stick, so you can take everything away in its row. The purple is a stick, so you could take away everything in its row. Uh, the little brown is a stick here, so you can take everything away in its row. And because it's a two cell, you can take everything away around it. Um, so now this is a three cell, so you can't have anything on that middle bit because it would take the whole thing away. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to find, okay. Now in the rightmost two columns, uh, you only have two colors, yellow and red. So we can't have anything outside of that. Oh my gosh, I don't know what happened there. Um, you can't have anything else outside of that, uh, these two columns. So the red can uh, be identified as here the yellow can now be identified as being here. 
take away everything else in that row and the green is here take away everything else in that column because you can't have anything in its row column or around it so all of those are good um let's see so the orange is now only in this column so there can't be any orange here or here uh, let's see the blue is only within this column so no more blue outside of that column and because it's a two cell you can't have anything around it so that leaves our orange and takes away the rest of that row everything around it's accounted for that leaves our light blue our pink our purple our gray oh my gosh this one was really not that bad and the dark blue okay that was really really incredibly fast oh and the brown sorry yeah but good job everybody that one was purported to be pretty pretty difficult and yeah um at least 10 people have done it and it still has a very high average for some reason so i'm guessing that somebody left their puzzle sitting there for a very long time and it skewed the results um but yeah that's that was really fun. It was just really, really quite quick. So let's go ahead and move up to a two star and let's do a 12 by 12 two star. And let's uh, see how the same rules can apply no matter how many stars you're looking for. Um, you have some additional rules like the three by rule that I'll talk about when I see one, but I don't see one just yet. Um, you also have a four by rule where if you have uh, four cells in a row four by one or four by two like this one um, you can break it down into two by two blocks and know that you have to have a star here and have to have a star here so there can't be one here can't be one here because that's uh, definitely a star and that's definitely a star well, let me just check back make sure I'm not missing anything from anyone nope okay yeah, so let's try to count, do some counting. So we have one, two, three, four, five colors in the rightmost five uh, columns. So we can't have anything outside of those columns of those colors because you have to be able to fit uh, two stars in each shape and each column and each row, of course. Um, so now in the, let's see, now we have a, a four by two here. So we have a two by two here where there's definitely a star and a two by two here where there's definitely a star. So they can't be here or here. Um, in the yellow shape, we have, whether we have one here or not, we have at least one here. So we can't have a star here because that would eliminate this entire yellow shape. So look what that's done. That's made a three by. So whenever you have a three by anything, you can eliminate the middle. So if it's a three by one or two, um, this is a three by two, you can eliminate both the middles. If it's a three by three, you can only eliminate the single middle cell because that would take away everything else um, in that shape. So now we know our first star of the puzzle is here. We can take away everything around it. Um, but not everything in the row or column just yet, because again, we're looking for two stars. Um, but we know the second one's got to be here. All right, and so let's just keep looking around. With this light green, uh, we can't have a star here because that would take away this whole shape. And we'd only have a two by two where we can only fit one star. Um, so that wouldn't work. Let's see. Uh, if there's anything else that I'm missing. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, no. That's no help. One. One, two. Nope. That's no help. Hey, baby girl. All right. Hi, baby girl. It's okay. It's okay. All right, so we have one, two, three, 
So we have three colors in the top three uh, rows, but unfortunately we have this little brown one sneaking in. So let's see, if we did have a star here, there would just have to be a star in this blue region here. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, but not really very helpful right away. So let's look at our um, sets of twos and that'll help us kind of determine where, where the stars are going to be placed or where they must go. Um, and what I mean by that is if we, for instance, look at the top two rows, within any two rows, we know we have to have four stars, a total of four stars. Um, and looking at our two by two regions where within any two by two cell, you can only have one star. Um, let's say if we have one here, two, we uh, found that one, so that's three, this is four. So we can identify that there's gotta be one light blue star here. There has to be. That takes away our brown. So that lets us know that this blue has to solidly be in this top three uh, rows. So we could take all of that away. And also we know that the second uh, and fourth stars for these two rows combined have to be here and here. So there's definitely at least a yellow star here. Let's see, so one, two, um, but this one could be pink or yellow, so we still can't really make a definitive uh, guess about this this area here. Let's see. Now we know that there's a star here and we found this one already, so we can take away this pink and this yellow because this row is complete. Um, so now we do know that the star for this region is here. And then our second yellow has got to be here because there can't be one here. All right, and so now we know that with this row, there's definitely a star here and definitely a star here. So now this column is done. We have a stick in this purple, so we can't have anything else in this uh, column. So that means there's two stars here. Got to take away everything around that one. Um, there's two stars here. This is a three by one. So we can take away the middle and both of the stars are there. Take away everything around it. Uh, so yeah, we're moving a little bit now. We got a three by two here. So we can take away the middle. That leaves that star there and completes this column. So the second star for this gray area is here. So we can't have anything else here. So now our red stars are definitely within this single column. There's definitely one here to complete this row and one here. Um, our second star for the orange, I'm sorry, our first star for the orange, second star for this row is definitely in the orange. Um, so that means our second star for the orange has to be here. So we can take all of that away around it. Um, so that means that this is now a four by. So we can break it into two by two sections. So there's definitely a star in here and definitely a star here. So we could take away everything around it or on the sides of it. Um, let's see. So there's definitely a star here, but we still have too many options for what could be left in that row. So let's see. If there's anything else we can uh, remove right away. So sorry. One, two, three, four. That's too many. I do see that we have all four stars accounted for in this set of two rows here. So we know there's one here. There's definitely at least I'm sorry, there's definitely two here, so that's three. And we've accounted for this one, so that's four. So there cannot be any stars in this uh, set of two here. My dogs are so silly. Alrighty. So the, the second red has got to be somewhere in here. 
Um, maybe it's in here. Let's see if we can break this down into at least uh, four segments or three segments. Um, there's too many. So there's one, two, three, and then four. So there, it could be here or here. So we can't make a determination yet about where the star is in this red. So let's see. Um, what about here? There's definitely a star here. Um, yeah, there's still really no way to tell. So one here, two, three. Again, it could be one here or here. So let's just keep looking. That's unsatisfying. Oh, actually, no, check this out. We've got uh, one here, one here to complete the gray. So that's two. Uh, because this is a four by, we know there's one here. So that's three. So there has to only be one star in this green area. So there can only be one star in this green area. So there's uh, that's one accounted for. That's two accounted for. Um, yeah, still not a help because there could be three and four here, here, or here. So we just don't know. So yeah, let's just keep looking, whittling things down. Let's see what we've got. So let's check out these um, two columns. So we definitely have one here, definitely have one here. So this is one, two, three. So there's one in this entire area, this entire five by two area. Um, yes, yeah, so that's not helpful because it could be here in this brown or it could be in the green. But let's see if we can narrow that down some. I like this. I'm sorry. I adore it when it gets kind of hard or a little tricky. Um, so let's see one in this whole area here. So that leaves a question of whether or not there's one here. Hmm. So interestingly, this brown, the blue, the green are within the first four columns. Um, the orange could be, but if there's a star here, then that would take it out of the first four columns. So if there's a star here, that means that there's one in this green or dark blue section that's in here. So that's interesting because um, as soon as we know anything about these three regions, we can make a lot of determinations. We can make a lot of determinations, but it's still kind of a tricky one right now. Um, let's check this out. So we've got one area here. I'm looking at these two columns. One area here, that's a two by two. One area here, that's a two by two. One area here, that's a two by two. And one area here, that's a two by two. Oh, I wish uh, Sophie were here because she's, <laughs> uh, she has a great eye for these things. Let's see, so if there's one here, one here, one here, definitely one here that's still like it's it's letting us know where they're placed but there's still so many different colors within each of those sections that it makes it really difficult all right we know there's one here Yeah, guys, I'm I'm getting a little stuck. I might have to ask for a hint from our little gaming 
hint system here, but let's take one more pass at it and just count our cells, count our rows, count our columns, and see if there's anything we can quickly determine that I might have missed. Um, sometimes it's as simple as not marking out all of the uh, auxiliary uh, cells beside your stars. So let me just make sure I've crossed all my T's and dotted all my I's. I love these moments so I, f I love I love the challenge I love when it's like oh gosh wait a minute that's too many to make a determination um, if you have five cells you can actually determine that the second and fourth cells beside them can go but there's six here so that's that's impossible to do um, this one can't do much with okay guys look at this we have a, a column with one space and two spaces so there's definitely a star here so we could take all those away and definitely a star here so we could take everything around that away so now that leaves where uh, there's definitely a star here um, that's that's good let's see what else we can do um, so in this column there's one here um, if there's one here or not, there's at least one here, so we can't have a star here. Um, one, two. No real help there. There's definitely a star here. Nothing else we can do. So now let's count our rows just to see what we can see. Definitely one here, definitely one here. So now this is reduced to just being here or here. Still can't really make a decision about this four, this set of four. Um, yeah, because there could be a star here, which means the orange would be here. So we still have to wait on what we decide about this four column stack. So again, let's look at our rows. Definitely one here, definitely one here. So now we have four regions, one, two, three, four, for these uh, four stars to go. So that's helpful, but kind of not really. <laughs> uh, three, that's a lot there. It's only one here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, so still too many to count here. My little doggies. <laughs> They're such a mess. Um, only thing I can kind of kind of determine right now is that there's only one star uh, here, like we talked about before, because we know there's one here, here, and here. Um, which means that now that this is eliminated, the one star for this green has to be here. So there's either one here or here, so still definitely not giving us anything we can eliminate, but nice to know that that one star's within this region. Yeah, I might, I might just need a hint. Even with uh, finding this star, Yeah, this is really a challenge. Hmm. And if you see anything, certainly uh, stop me and let me know. I'm going to think on it just a little longer before I get a hint. And of course, give you the space to uh, call in and or leave a comment if you have any thoughts on um, today's topic of agenderism. Or any of the topics that I've listed in my uh presentation up here um, or just anything else that's on your mind let's see oh gosh here we go this is a really really simple one and this column we've uh, eliminated everything else here so the only place that the purple can go or lavender can go is here 
So we can take that away and it's a three by one. So now we know where both stars are because we can take away the middle. So there's a star here, star here. Look at that, just give ourselves a little more time. That really helps. And now this is a four by. This is a four by. So we have one star here for sure, one star here for sure. And we can uh, find that the gray is here. Take that away. Uh, take away everything else around this star. All right, and so now this is a stick where there's nothing else that can go in this row because the blue's got to be here, here, or here. Uh, that leaves our second red, which leaves our um, row here as having to be here, so that can't be here. Um, let's see. So now we have a three cell L, three cell L. All right. Sorry. Okay. And now this column leaves our second star being here. Everything else is already taken away around it. In this column, we have to have a star here because there's only the two cells uh, here. So we can take that away. Um, let's see. One, two. Yeah, so there's a star here. Take away everything around it. And then there's definitely going to be a star within these two cells. So we can take that one away. There's three possible, three and a possible. Do you play, do you play spades? That's like one of my favorite games, like group games, uh, card games to play. Um, but we'd say there's three and a possible. Here there's three possibles. So let's see. Yeah, we're, I, I love this. There's still so much challenge in this puzzle. It's great. All right, this row is complete, so we can uh, determine that our second orange star is here. Take that one away. Um, there's definitely one here. Two, three, if we're looking at these two columns. So there's only one in this region, which means there's only one in this region Oh, no, that's not true. Because look at this. There's one, two, in these two columns, one, two, three, four. So there's definitely two within this three by two. So whenever we have a three by anything, we can get rid of the middle. So definitely going to be a star here. Definitely going to be a, yeah, a star here. And then there's just uh, one more here, and it has to go on this green because the brown's accounted for. Um... This row is complete, so our second green is here. This row is complete, so light green is here. <coughs> this column's complete, so the light blue, or the blue is there. Um, our indigo color is our last star. Wow, that one was tricky, but we didn't get or need any hints. And look at that, we're still we still did it really fast. Well done, oh my gosh. Okay, I kinda wanna do one more. <laughs> Just cause that was such a mental exercise, I loved it. Um, so yeah, let's do one more. And again, just offering this space if you're, if you're in Hong Kong or in uh, China or um, India or somewhere where you're experiencing your afternoon and evening, feel free to give me a buzz. Um, if you're in Dalian, China, like my best friend, um, it's probably almost 9.30 in the evening, which is a much more appropriate time to chit chat about sexy times. So for, feel free to give me a call. Um, I, I only speak English, unfortunately, and some Spanish. Um, so for Western cultures, it's usually very early. In America, it's, um, I think, just about 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> so um, if you're in the UK like me, it's uh, in the afternoon time. So again, I'm just sticking around for a bit if you want to 
chat with me uh, on the comment section or um, by giving me a phone call. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Let's just do one more puzzle. <coughs> I'm losing my voice a bit here too. Just to uh, give you that space to chime in about um, uh, being agender, like our daily topic. Um, if you want to talk about puzzles or if you want to chit chat about any of my thoughts on these particular topics or anything else you'd like to discuss. So now the question is, <coughs> should we do a two star or a three star? <laughs> I love the challenge of the last one. So let's, let's knock it up to three stars and see if we can um, solve this one expeditiously. So even though it's three stars, you still have a lot of the same rules with regions. So my first thing that I see is I try to count up if there's uh, a set of shapes or or colors solidly within a certain amount of cells or rows or columns. Hi, sweetie. I'm not really seeing anything that's very tidy. Hi. We might need to go soon anyway because baby girl's entering phase one of her wake up process. <laughs> she takes a while to like kind of kick in the gear. So let's see if we can get this one out. Hi, sweetie. So um, I know that we talk about our three buys and four buys in uh, two star puzzles. But with this one being three stars, we have to look at five buys. And here's one. This is a five by two. So whenever you have a five by, you can automatically eliminate anything that's in the middle of that. Um, so five by two, take away the middles, um, the second and fourth middles. Um, so that leaves this as a definite, this as a definite, take away everything around it. And then this is gonna be a definite here. Hi. So next we have a five by here. So we can take away everything in the middles, the second and fourth ones. And that leaves a definite here and a definite uh, here. So let's get everything around it. Hi. You okay? How are you? How are you feeling? You okay? I didn't mean to get her in the mouth. Like, oh gosh, you should not kiss babies in the mouth. I've never had a, a cold sore. I just still don't want to chance it. You just, um, if it's your baby, that's one thing. But like, you should never kiss a baby you don't know in the mouth because there's a thing called S HSV1, her herpes simplex. Um, it's basically cold sores, but it, it, it hurts babies, it can kill babies, it can travel to your the baby's brain um, and cause developmental issues, it, it's serious. So there's a lot of like people kissing babies out here, just don't do it, <laughs> just don't risk it. Um, yeah, so there's definitely can't be a star here or here because there's definitely one here. Um, I'm also looking at this little shape right here. I'm breaking it into like two by two sections so if I look at this one as a separate two by two, I can only fit two in here, but it's now a three by, it's now a three by two. So I know there's definitely a star here and there's definitely gonna be uh, two stars here. So I can take away the middle, got a definite here, definite here now, and I can take away these two cause there's gotta be one here. Where are you falling over to? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? In phase two, I'm getting some smile. I'm getting some smile. Oh, she's so sleepy. You okay? Oh, my tummy is growling. Hi, honey. All right. Now, this one is... Um, a lot of cells long, like what, four or five, six, seven long. But if we actually break it into two by two regions, 
there's got to be one star here, one star here, and one star here. So that's already kind of accounted for, but there's definitely going to be a star here, so we can take that away. You okay? That's so sweet. Oh, let's see if there's anything else we can chunk down like that. We'll get a little stuff. You alright? Oh. She's up. <clears throat> I'm seeing that with this brown shape, if there's a star here and a star here, there's at least one star here. There could be two, but there's definitely at least one star here. So we can't have one here because that would eliminate this three by one section. You okay. So we'd know our blue star for our final third is here. We could take that away. And so now that leaves a three by here, three by two here. Because if we have one here, that's a three by. So we can eliminate the middle. There's a definite star here. Take that away. Definite star here. Take that away. This whole column is done. It's done, you're done. And now we know there's one here and one here, so we can take this away. You all right? Hi. You still waking up or are you up? You just looking at what mommy's doing? So this yellow section, uh, it's broken into three two by twos. So there's one here, one here, one here. So it can't have stars in any of that because it will eliminate our ability to have three stars in this uh, shape. So that leaves our third star for this red shape and this row. So we can take all that away. Now this lavender is broken into uh, one two by two and uh, where two go in this three by two. So a three by, we can take away the middle. Definitely a star here. Definitely a star here. Hi, friend. You okay? Hi, baby girl. So this whole row the threes, the three stars are going to be here, here, and here. My stomach is really growing. So now this column, we have a star here, here, and here. All right. So here's uh, where the counting kind of helps in these bottom two rows. We know there's three stars in this shape, because there has to be. We know there's a third star for this dark purple indigo shape here. So that's four stars accounted for. And we know that there has to be six in these bottom two rows. So there have to be two in this three by two. So we can take away the middle, definitely a star here. And there's definitely gonna be one star here. And there's only one within the remaining green cells to account for that third and look we know it's here because remember we looked at this row and determined that there has to be one here so there cannot be a, a star here so now this row definitely a star here definitely a star here <laughs> leaving our two stars for the yellow here and here and there and there hi Oh, boy. 
You don't have much left. Okay. Get you a fresh one in a second. That's the last little bit. Uh, I don't think so. You should just smile at me. There you go. <coughs> Still waking up a little, I think. <laughs> waking up? You waking up? Did you wake up? So this, uh, this whole column is complete. We know that because there's a star here, there can't be all three in this bottom row, so there's got to be one here for this uh, violet shape, so we can take that away. Mm -hmm. um, so since there's one here, there has to be two here, so there can't be anything else outside of those shapes on that row. So that leaves this one and this one. <laughs> so that's the remaining one for that row. Hi. Hi, darling. All right, these rows are done. There's two here. Definitely going to be two here, so we could take away those two. Um, hi. Are you going to help me? Ooh, ooh, girlfriend. so heavy. She's uh, 17 pounds, 17 pounds, seven and a half kilos. So, oh, my tummy is really growling. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, let's see. One here, so there's gotta be two in this three by two, so we can take away the middle. Definitely gonna be one there. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? She's coming online, like slowly but surely. She's she's getting there. <laughs> she's so cute. So that's that. Uh, in this one, we have two cell two stars left for this olive green. So there's definitely one here. And definitely going to be one there as well. So let's take everything away around that. So that leaves, um, this is a three by one. So that take, take away the middle. Star here, star here. And that row is now complete. Complete. Um, this leaves a three by three and a one cell. So that just means that we can't fit two stars here if we had, um, a star here so we can take that cell away um, the the third star for this column has to be in this gray because you can't fit three in the rest of that shape if you don't so not only can we eliminate the rest of that column but we know that there's one here and two here so there's this is a three by two we could take away the middle and we know there's a star here. Take away everything around it. So now that's a three by one, where we know that star has got to be in that column, and then the the second star is going to be there. Hi. So that column is complete. This column is complete. And we have a one and a three by two. Um, with this one, this whole row is complete. So now we know that's that third one is there. <laughs> She's up, up. There's the rest of that row. There's where that third one goes for that row. Third one for that row. <laughs> Hi. And I think we can wrap this one up pretty quickly. Third one for that row. This row is complete. One, two, three. That one's complete. This column is complete. This shape is complete. This shape is complete. 
and one, two, three, that one's done. Gotta have a uh, one and two there. That leaves the third one here. <laughs> uh, let's see, one, two, three. This column is complete. That completes this shape and this column. This column and shape is done. There we go. Got that one done, right? Right in the nick of time. Right under the wire. And we still did it relatively quickly. Good job. Yay! So that was great. All right, so I'm going to tend to my child. Yeah. You want some food? We're working on solids. So she's up to twice a day now with... Um, some pureed foods which is great so we're gonna have some apples strawberries and mangoes or something of the other and um, what a treat this was those are some really challenging fun puzzles yeah <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow we're gonna um, have one more uh, asexual related discussion um, again, I think we're going to just talk about some celebrities and key figures in the history of asexuality. So join me for that and for our next set of daily LinkedIn puzzles. Uh, and thanks for joining me today. It was really lovely to hang out with you. Yes, it was. <laughs> All right, going to go feed her and feed me and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, you can't be burping like that. That's rude. That's rude. She's like, no, it ain't. All right. Love you. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>